Hello students of science, let's talk about the respiratory system diseases and how a vast majority of them are caused by smoking. Here we can see an old loading screen. Yep, congratulations, you have successfully installed cancer. Tobacco and smoking is a huge cause of cancer. Here you can see this is actually tobacco covering the world because unfortunately there's a lot of people in the world that do smoke. So let's talk about some of the problems with it. Now, I should get right into this. Not everyone who smokes gets cancer. And you don't need to write down this slide. This is just for your own benefit. In fact, most people who smoke will not get lung cancer. There's a lot of people who have been smoking for a very long time and they do not have lung cancer. However, they and you are much more likely to suffer chronic bronchitis, emphysema, heart disease, stroke, cancer of the not just limited to, but it definitely including mouth, uterus, cervix, liver, kidney, bladder, and stomach, leukemia, miscarriage, cataracts, glaucoma, diabetic retinopathy, macular degeneration. That's right, smoking can lead to blindness. It's the most prevalent form of preventable blindness. Impotence and erectile dysfunction. That's right. Men who smoke, 85% increase in their inability to get it up. So keep that in mind, men and women, I suppose. Children of female smokers have lower birth weight, increased risk of sudden infant death syndrome, and birth defects. You're at increased risk of picking up the flu. Ask anyone who's had the flu how much they enjoy it. Smoking is the known or likely cause of 25 different diseases. So, you're right, you might not get cancer, but you might have any one of these. Keep that in mind. There are 5 million deaths worldwide every year, half occurring in middle age, all preventable. Some of the uh, damage that can suffer to your body is cancers of pretty much everywhere in your body, chronic diseases of pretty much everywhere in your body. I mean, hip fracture due to smoking. Yes, that's right. They're related. It's not a good thing. Just don't do it. Respiratory diseases. The common respiratory diseases, most of which are caused by smoking. First one is called COPD. You may have seen commercials for this. That stands for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. And that is two diseases combined together, chronic bronchitis and emphysema. In chronic bronchitis, the bronchi become inflamed and clogged with mucus. There you can see regular bronchi. Here they are, excess mucus. Mmm, who doesn't love mucus? Simple activities become very difficult with bronchitis. Very hard to do anything endurance. Very hard to even stay on your feet. You're always coughing. You're always tired. I have personal experience on this. Not from smoking. Emphysema. You lose a lot of elasticity of your lung tissue and you decrease the surface area. That's bad. You need a lot of surface area for gas exchange. Smoking hurts that. Lung cancer, of course. Lung cancer is extremely lethal. Uh, about 90% and upwards due to the rapid spread to the rest of the body. It's not just that it attacks your lungs. It's that because your respiratory and circulatory systems are so tied together, it spreads fast and it's very aggressive. Here we can see that there's about a 20 year lag time between when people really start smoking and when lung cancer. Here you can see 1900, right around here we had World War I, people started to smoke a lot. 20 years later, lung cancer rates mirrored that almost perfectly. Women didn't start picking up smoking until later on, so their lung cancer rates were lower until the 20 year lag time hit them as well. And of course, asthma. Asthma is no fun, ask anyone who's got it. This is an inflammation of the bronchioles, and this can be triggered due to any number of different things. Smoking makes it worse. It's not a good thing. So, the three most dangerous parts of tobacco. Number one, we got nicotine. That's not the reason that people start smoking, but it's the reason that people stay. It's a very addictive stimulant, and it increases your heart rate and your blood pressure. There's carbon monoxide. Here we can see headaches, nausea, breathlessness, collapse, dizziness, and loss of consciousness. Signs of a good night out or carbon monoxide poisoning. Carbon monoxide is odorless and tasteless. You, can't, you don't know what's happening aside from what it's doing to your body. And it's not pleasant. Smoking puts that inside your blood. Carbon monoxide, not a good thing. That's the poisonous gas that locks onto and binds the hemoglobin from your body and prevents it from binding with oxygen. This makes your blood less efficient. And of course, tar. Tar is the cigarette residue which contains many of the known carcinogens. These are the things we know cause cancer. There's a lot of things that probably do, but let's just start with the ones that we know. Uh, one of my favorite internet ads ever, which ones do you want? Click here if you want the pink ones. 
I want the pink ones. Those seem much more pleasant to have than the black ones. Tire, of course, is the stuff that also stains your teeth, gums up your lungs, and this is the one that makes all those carcinogens stick inside your lungs, causing all of those different problems. Here we can see a comparison of healthy lungs versus smokers' lungs. The black stuff there is tar. It's not the same stuff they use on the road, but it's not that far from it. But this is the one that's causing all those different problems. Once again, I want the pink ones. Here we can see tar-filled lungs inflated versus healthy lungs inflated. And that tar is causing so many problems at completely the cellular level, not something that you want. The other stuff that's in smoke, you got benzene, uh, additive to gasoline, butane, ammonia, toluene, cadmium, hydrogen cyanide, all terrible, terrible things that you should probably want to avoid putting in your body, especially avoid inhaling them. And that's what smokers are doing. The effects that smoke will have on the body, Tobacco smoke is going to paralyze the tracheal cilia, these little tiny hairs inside your throat. Now, you see, you want them in there because they're taking these bad bacteria and they're just bringing them up. So you go, <clears throat> and you bring it up to your mouth, and you either cough it out, or spit it out, or swallow it down, and they're all killed. When you smoke tobacco, the mucus is going to paralyze. When you smoke tobacco, these are going to be paralyzed. So this means that the stuff in there is going down instead of out to your mouth where you can spit it out or destroy it or whatnot here. That's not something you want. This is where you get what's called smoker's cough. Overnight, when you're presumably not smoking, your cilia will wake up. And of course, they're going to start moving all that mucus up to your mouth, you know, trying to clear the lungs, doing their job. In the morning, you've got a lot of stuff there to now clear out. And of course, what do people do to stop the coughing? They smoke which stops the cilia, which stops this whole process, and continues to make it worse. This junk shouldn't be down in your lungs. You want your trachea moving that mucus away. A non-smoker's chance of making it to 80. So I'm a non-smoker. My chances of making it to 80 years old is 55%. You know, not great odds, but, you know, I'll take them. However, if I was a smoker, making it to 80, 30% chance. I don't like those odds. That 25% chance, I... I there's a lot of things that I'd missed there. Here you can see a comparison of heavy, light, and non-smokers versus uh, body mass index, essentially, uh, you know, the, the weight. Here we can see an obese BMI versus normal BMI. So these people have a healthy weight, these people are overweight. And here you can see obese is a medical term, so we're talking greater, so this is obese, severely obese, and morbidly obese. And the thing that always strikes me is you look at 18.5 to 24.9 BMI, who's our heavy smokers. So these are people who are not overweight, but smoke heavily. They are pretty much just as bad as someone who's severely overweight, but doesn't smoke. The moral of the story, smoking makes it worse. Being in shape makes it better, as well as not smoking. There's a common theme here. I hope you're seeing it. Smoking also has severe consequences to the circulatory system, because your respiratory and circulatory systems are so very, very tightly intertwined. Less than 10 minutes after you start smoking, your heart rate is going to speed up by about 30%. This is partially due to the carbon monoxide in the smoke hurting your body's ability to carry oxygen. Remember, the blood is still flowing, it's just less efficient, so your heart has to pump faster just to keep up. Both of these are going to become permanent after prolonged exposure to cigarettes. You're going to have a permanently higher heart rate and permanently less efficient blood. That's not something you want. Smoking is also going to increase your chance for heart disease, atherosclerosis, and stroke. This is a person here who has a stroke. Part of their brain died, more or less. Smoking increases that risk. I've seen family members with strokes. If I knew there was anything that was preventable that could have done it, I wish I could have told them about that. You can do that too. If you were to stop smoking right now, 20 minutes from now, your blood pressure would be fine. Eight hours, carbon monoxide would drop by half and your oxygen would be normal. In two days, your chance of having a heart attack would start to decline. 72 hours, your bronchial tubes would relax and your energy levels would rise. Two weeks from today, your circulation would be better and would be improving for 10 weeks. Three months from now, your coughing, your wheezing, your breathing problems would dissipate. One year from today, after you stop smoking, your risk of having a heart attack is going to be half of what it is today. Five years from now, your risk of having a stroke is going to return to that of a non-smoker. In 10 years, your risk of lung cancer will return to that of someone who didn't smoke at all. And in 15 years, 
your risk of heart attack will return to that of a non-smoker. There is immediate benefit to quitting smoking right now. If you or someone you know is smoking, try to get them to stop. There's much, much better things to be doing with that time, money, and lifespan.